What's going on guys, it's Barkerson here and we are back with another video and now that 2018 is finally over we can finally look forward to 2019 as things are finally going to start to arrive this year and now we're going to be talking about the most anticipated games of 2019. I wanted to leave off games such uh, the big AAA titles such as Anthem and such like that because although I am a bit excited for them I wanted to leave them off and just to give more attention to some of the smaller games that maybe you haven't heard of in a minute or just some games that you may have not had thought of so let's get into this. So the first game we have starting off now is Day is Gone. This is one of those biggest, bigger games that I haven't heard about it in a while. Is it just me or does this game sort of look like The Last of Us with the art style allies? Ever since seeing the barn trailer that was showing back in 2017 at E3, I've been waiting for to get my hands on this game. Although I do expect the zombie horde thing to get tiresome like, uh, while playing, somehow like the Alien and Alien Isolation did, the initial oomph factor that it will bring really intriguing to this game really seems to push the... The whole don't fight, just run mentality to an extent we've never seen before, and I'm really ready to try it when it comes out on April 26th. Out of all the games getting a sequel this year, I didn't think Far Cry New Dawn was going to be the one. Out of all the games in the Far Cry series to get a sequel, I didn't think this would be the one, though I do think it's the right direction, because the only other game that really comes to mind that could have had one is Far Cry 4, but it wouldn't have such a good backdrop to it as, good as New Dawn would. Though we don't much know much other than the release date of February 15th, which is quickly approaching, which means we... Uh, if I have a girlfriend by then, she's going to buy it for me for Valentine's Day, or at least pre-order it. I'll have to dive back into that world, which hopefully change, changes enough after nuclear destruction, and the map, will, if being reused, will be different and spicy enough to warrant a sequel. And honestly, say what you will about the Far Cry formula and its systems, it does them well and it garners attention, personally. Honestly, I was thinking to put Mortal Kombat 11 here, but I'm not sure with the... The fact that we know little about the game or its roster unknown, it doesn't exactly have much attention just yet. On the other hand, we have games like Jump Force, which I'm not the biggest fan of anime, but seeing characters from One Piece to Death Note it has me really intrigued. It brings in that arena fighting style from Soul Calibur and it bumps it up to notch, but doesn't overdo it like some games such as Dragon Ball Xenoverse. It's a perfect balance between the two. Although the character models don't match the backgrounds because a lot of people say they look way too realistic, uh, I can look past that and see a solid game with what should be cartoon-esque battles. That drops also on February 15th. I was going to put Crash Team Racing, but having played the original Sonic Racing games back on the 360, I had to choose this. Sonic Team Racing is may not be as good as Crash Racing, and it probably and it wasn't a part of my gaming experience as a whole. It was one of those games I played at a friend's house and never something I actually owned. The Sonic Team Racing is going to be the next good Sonic game after Sonic Mania. Both of them having been rebo reboots, ironically. Gosh, it's really depressing to think that. And uh, not too long ago, an argument between which series is better of Mario versus Sonic. And look how that played out. Anyways, this is going to be my version of Mario Kart since I don't have a Switch for the moment. And it's going to drop on May 21st. Lastly, to wrap up, we have Rage 2. I actually really liked the first game. And the ending was, yeah, it could have been better. But I wasn't mad about it. More shocked than just that it just ended without any indication that it would. Like, yeah, that's my objective. But I expected something more after that. And that's actually... And it's exactly what I'm going to get on May 14th. Don't get me wrong, I think the whole neon thing and bright blues and pinks is more of a gainer, garnier and tentering thing than it is within an aesthetic. But gameplay-wise, it looks like it's kind of like Doom if done properly. Having something like that in an open world is going to be really fun, hopefully. The vehicle combat is going to be better since the last time looking back, it has something to be desired, but most things from the last game should easily transfer over. And the story might not even, might not even matter. The gameplay is just what we expect, and hopefully it'll be worth it. Anyways, like I said, it's dropping on May 14th. And let me know what you think down below in the comment section below. Let me see if any other games, you know, preferably indie or smaller market games that maybe we haven't heard of yet. And we'll see how those things turn out. Anyways, I hope you guys all are enjoying 2019 so far. And let's see how those games turn out.